Tonight, the number of new jobless claims shows the devastating burden being shouldered by American workers. Nearly 1.2 million Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week. That's the 20th straight week with claims crossing a million. Tonight, CBS's Mark Strassman hears from two out of work Americans, one who lost that $600 weekly unemployment check for Brennan. We begin tonight with breaking news. A staggering and sobering projection showing the coronavirus pandemic is only getting worse here in the U.S. A research model regularly used by the White House now predicts the death toll here in the U.S. could hit almost 300,000 in the next four months. That's close to double the number of people who have already died nationwide since the pandemic began. Health officials say tens of thousands of lives could be saved if all Americans wore masks. Nowhere in the U.S. is that life and death struggle more obvious than on the Texas border, where tonight doctors say they're desperate for help and hospital beds. And as we come on the air tonight, there's yet another example of just how far... Today, the coronavirus cast a shadow over President Trump's visit to Ohio, a state that is crucial to his reelection campaign. It was intended to highlight his efforts to boost U.S. manufacturing. The president also veered off script with an attack on rival Joe Biden's faith. Here's CBS's Paula Reed. President Trump's campaign-style trip to Ohio got off to a rocky start today when the state's governor, Mike DeWine, tested positive for COVID just before he was to meet Mr. Trump at the airport. I just said I look forward to seeing the governor. They said, sir, he just tested positive. Amid sagging polls, the president gave a speech aides said would include a vision for the president's second term. But he also repeated the false claim that kids are immune when it comes to COVID. Very young children are incredibly powerful. They're much stronger than all of us when it comes to the immune system. It's an incredible thing to see. He also kept up his attacks on rivals. Now I'm losing my life. I'm losing my husband. I'm gonna be buried under a building. Now I'm gonna die. I'm wait, I'm now I'm waiting the moment. How, how I'm gonna die? Is it going to be fast? Am I going to feel it? Am I going to be near him? 29-year-old Sablani, a U.S. resident, came back to her native Lebanon to get married. The original plan was to have the wedding party in the United States. But husband Ahmed Speh says he's been waiting for his U.S. visa for three years. With immigration laws getting stricter by the day under the Trump administration, the couple says they didn't want to be apart any longer and finally settled on celebrating their marriage in Beirut with friends and family in the city where their love first blossomed. At that moment, the beautiful place I was in, uh, where the people were dining in the restaurant, chopping, uh, walking, it turned out into a ghost town, filled with dust, shutter glasses, um, people yelling, bleeding. It was a nightmare. Siblani did a final run through of the bridal suite where she and Speh would spend the night after the party. Oh, very nice. Ooing and eyeing over the flourishes. When the couple returned, the red rose petals thrown off the bed were all that remained of the romance they'd envisioned. Because we are alive, we can continue. And don't be sad or anything. We will continue and we will pass it and we will make it, inshallah. Inshallah, and Isra, this is very emotional for you. I don't know what to tell you, but trust me, there is no word to describe really what I feel, no matter how I talk. In a city where life was turned upside down in seconds, Isra and Ahmed are just grateful to be alive. Jumana Karachi, CNN, Istanbul. Joe Biden. He's against God, he's against guns. He's against energy, our kind of energy. The Biden campaign shot back, referencing the president's controversial photo op in Lafayette Square, saying Donald Trump threw a priest out of his church just so he could profane it and a Bible for his own cynical optics. Today, the Commission on Presidential Debates rejected the Trump campaign's request to have a fourth debate earlier in the cycle to account for early mail-in voting. 
With the economy continuing to slump, it appears that voters will not get any immediate help from Congress. We're not having a short-term extension. With a deal unlikely, Mr. Trump said he's considering trying to get relief to workers through executive action, though it's unclear how effective that would be. Today, the president suggested that a COVID vaccine could be available by Election Day, but that's a significantly earlier timeline than the one offered by members of his own coronavirus task force. They've said that a vaccine could be available at the end of this year or possibly early next year. But some health experts have expressed concern that the administration may try to rush this vaccine and potentially jeopardize its safety. Margaret. Paula Reeve at the White House.